Okay, welcome again, friends. In our third session, as I have told you, that in this session we will look about the tumors that affect the pleura. We have seen that various factors and a group of disease that are grouped as an inflammatory or non inflammatory uh, disease that affects the pleura lying in the cavity. In this session, we will look about the tumors that uh, uh, affect the cellular membrane aligning in the, the, the pleural cavity. And you want to know that, that the tumors affecting the pleura may be either primary or secondary. When you say primary, it means the tumor uh, originate there without uh, being metastatized from any parts of the body. But uh, secondary, it means it due to metastatic process, either the tumor occurred somewhere and uh, therefore metastatized to the to the pleura that line the lung cavity. And uh, you want to know that the secondary tumors it means those are metastatic ones are common from breast and lung. It means the breast cancer and lung cancer are the, are the cancer that are commonly associated with the tumors of the pleura as a secondary means. Let's start with the primary tumors. Primary tumors, the common one is called a methoserioma. Methoserioma is an common tumor. And this tumor is arise from the mesocerial cells lining the pleura. As we've seen from the previous uh, first sessions about the about the 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 structure of the of the of the of the pleura, we have seen that the outer uh, the out the, the the inner pleura, that's called visceral pleura, is lined with the uh, cells that are called mesocerial cells. And also, once you know that the mesocerioma can be either benign or malignant. If the benign is sometimes called pleural fibroma. What's it, the pleural fibroma? And this is an histology of the pleural fibroma. Pleural fibroma is it means it will remain to attach it to the pleura by a pedicle. When someone say a pleural fibroma, it means that is a benign uh, mesocerioma which is still uh, attached to the pleura by the pedicle. And once you, you, you cut it in a cut session, you see a world appearance. As you see this, uh, the world appearance. World appearance. And uh, microscopically, once you view this uh, benign, benign uh, methotherioma, you will see that the wall is, color is, is, is composed of collagen and reticulin fibers that have interspersed the uh, fibroblast. And you will see the, the bundles of, of, of spinal cells and uh, the bands of collagen. But uh, what you know that in this, uh, in this uh, mesocerioma, because it's a uh, benign one, you will, there will be no the manifestation of the atypia. And also the mitosis uh, changes are so rare. So these are the concepts that you should understand. And also, let's uh, we have discussed about the benign methoserioma, which is also called the pleural fibroma. And now, let's talk about the malignant methoserioma. It means that is a cancer. Uh, it means you will see that there is a diffuse ratio in that involves the pleura. Uh, in contrast to benign, it is associated with asbestos exposure. Once uh, someone uh, is exposed to the material like asbestos, we likely to explain the malignant mesocerioma. And uh, the, it, the, the exposure should be a long-term one, a long-term exposure, a long-term, not, uh, not a short exposure. For example, for about 25 up to 45 years, someone exposed to asbestos, so we develop such a malignant mesocerioma. And uh, once, you, once, you, once you examine the people with malignant uh, mesocerioma, you see that the asbestos bodies are found in lungs up to 100% for the patient that have mesocerioma uh, cancer. So that's why we say that the asbestos is commonly associated with this kind of uh, cancer. And uh, this kind of cancer is usually associated with massive pleural effusion. As we have seen that uh, sometimes the, the pleural effusion might be caused by the cancer. 
uh, and one of the cancers is a malignant mesoserioma, which will cause the massive uh, pleural effusions. Therefore, there are accumulation of the fluid in the pleural cavity. The accumulation of the of the the fluid in the, in the pleural cavity will cause various consequences, uh, such as dyspnea. It means uh, someone will experience difficulty in embracing, and also you will find that someone has a uh, find someone has a, a lung collapse. The lung will collapse due to the compression resulting from the presence of fluid in the in the pleural cavity. Also, grocery. Uh, this uh, malignant mesoserioma, you see that they are diffuse, forming a thick layer. And also, soft gelatinous uh, gray pinkish. But in microscopic, I want to know that you will see that the epithelial pattern of the malignant mesoserioma always resemble the adenocarcinomas. And also, we will see the sarcomatoid pattern or eumorphic patterns. Neumorphic patterns means the atypia. We have seen that in the benign there is no uh, manifestation of the atypia, but in here you will see the atypia. It means the cells have uh, different shapes and structures, so are varying. And uh, sometimes you, uh, microscopically you can see biphasic pattern. Biphasic pattern it means that involves the epithelial pattern and the, the sarcomatoid word pattern. You see both of these patterns. You see that the cell is resembling the adenocarcinomas and at the same time you see they are eumorphic. <coughs> this and the uh, histological section uh, that show the malignant, uh, malignant, malignant mesoserium. As you see these cells are type here. Uh, are eumorphic of different shapes and uh, size. Uh, and uh, I'd say the there are epithelioid sarcomatas or mixed epithelioid mesoserioids are just like elongated one like this one like this one they are an epithelioid and that is a just elongated this one is a, an epithelioid this one is an epithelioid this is an epithelioid or can be sarcomatas it means a remorphic pattern and sometimes mixed it means see by phasic pattern now, uh, what no, and uh, uh, some of the cases you can see the papillary patterns appear in this kind of cancer. Also, the another uh, serological manifestation of this uh, malignant mesoserioma, you will see that the malignant cells like this one uh, are being surrounded by the dense collagen fibers. These red ones that you see, these are dense collagen fibers uh, surrounding these uh, malignant cells and uh, this could uh, present what is called the desmoplasia. Desmoplasia it means there is a growth of the fibrous or connective tissue occurring around the neoplasm. So you see that these are desmoplastic. These are the characteristics of the malignant mesoseriomas. And sometimes you can see the invasion of the uh, pre-existing pleural uh, plaque or hyalinized collagen fibers. And sometimes you can see the another entity that is related to the asbestos. It means if we are professional about the the manifestation that are related to the uh, effect caused by the asbestos, once you see these uh, manifestation or histological properties uh, that are are likely to be caused by the asbestos exposure, uh, you have to be confident that it's a malignant mesoserioma. And. Uh, the secondary tumors, we have seen that the secondary tumors are common from the breast and the lung cancers. And these are more common, are more common than the, the primary tumor one. And the, as we have seen that the most frequent is a, a breast and a lung, and this travels through the lymphatics. Also, there are, uh, can be secondary due to ovarian cancer that occur by hematogenous roots uh, to the pleura. And finally, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thanks, and we come again.